Okay, everybody, we are live with alumni, Bayshore Christian Alumni Podcast, season two, episode six. And this season, as we've, we've shared with a lot of the Facebook uh, members, we wanted to branch out from just basketball and talk about a lot of different things related to Bayshore Christian ministry. And you can't do that without mentioning the most iconic dominant sports program that has ever played at the school, and that is girls volleyball. And we are here tonight with members of the first state title team in school history, the 1998 state champions, Bayshore Christian Faith Warriors. Ladies, we can't thank you enough for being here with us and thank you uh, for joining this week's podcast. Uh, we're gonna introduce each player in a moment, just go real quick with uh, uh, some uh, announcements. Obviously a lot of Bayshore family knows about uh, the passing of Mike Blocker. We wanna definitely mention that and keep his family in our prayers. Uh, so Mike, we love you and looking forward to seeing you on the flip side. There'll be a celebration of life here coming up. I just wanted to mention that because that's happened within the last week and we're certainly thinking about his family. Another reminder that the volleyball team itself at Bayshore is off to a great start. I think we're three or four and zero out of the gate. Uh, the Umanensky dynasty continues, started by these ladies right here tonight. Um, and so we're real happy about that. And of course the school, I think the enrollment now is over 300. So uh, great job, uh, Melanie. Uh, keeping the faith warrior tradition going down in South Tampa and on South McDill. Ladies, we're going to get started. You know, the mythology of Bayshore, you know, we've had these podcasts about basketball, Final Four, but that's a story of unfinished business. You guys actually finished the business with a state championship in 1998. We're going to go around the room and have everyone introduce uh, themselves. Tell us a little bit about what's been happening since graduation, and we'll start with Ashley Kramer. Kramer. Uh, tell us what we have. <laughs> yeah, Ashley Kramer. It's just call me Kramer. It's easier. Um, but yeah, so after uh, I graduated, I did go to college on a volleyball scholarship. I played for uh, uh, UW yeah, uh, up in Pensacola and uh, went four years there, graduated. Um, I actually do real estate. Um, so I've been doing that for 17 years, probably. So I really enjoy it. Um, I got married about five years ago. Uh, I have a six-year-old stepson, and I just had a brand new baby boy. He's 13 months. Uh, he keeps me busy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a, a COVID baby. So that was interesting. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, everything's great. Um, you know, it's so good to see everybody. You know, thanks for doing this so we can catch up with the girls from high school and then see the memories that you put on the Facebook page. It's always exciting to see things like that. That, that's really great. Yeah. You're doing real estate out of, is it, you said Clearwater or? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Clearwater area, yeah. But I work Tampa and everything, so basically the area. It's, you know, the real estate market's crazy right now, so. Sure. <laughs> well, next go to Kristen Sander. I mean, that, uh, so we had Kramer, and now we got Kristen Sander, and that's Bayshore royalty. That name, the Sander family, run, had, runs deep roots into Bayshore. Kristen, tell us about what's been happening uh, since graduation with you. Uh, I graduated. I went to college, uh, volleyball scholarship. Um, and then I actually went back to Bayshore and I am teaching there currently. I teach kindergarten there. Um, I got married. I married a uh, Keswick alumni. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, so it's, it's kind of a funny story. Like the first week of college, this guy came up to me and he said, Hey, did you go to Bayshore? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I went to Keswick. And I said, don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> and I walked away and I turned and left. And so that is my husband. Um, I get, yeah. So uh, we have four children. Three of them are at Bayshore. Our oldest graduated last year. So she's also Bayshore alumni now. Oh, great. Um, Very good. So, yeah. Oh, okay, oh, sorry. I didn't know you wrapped up. I was trying to type because I think oh, Melanie, no, okay. <laughs> Melanie is on Facebook. She wants the link. We're going to add her on if I can get her that link. So before I try to get that to her, let's turn to Ashley Kemp. Remember, you guys all have different last names now in many cases. So make sure you let me know. You know, uh, tell us about what's happening since graduation um, back and, and you know what, what you've been doing. It sounds like I should ask Kristen, is she helping coach volleyball since she's at Bayshore? But uh, yeah, tell us what's been happening, Ashley. 
Um, yeah, first, thanks so much, Steve, for doing this. It's always fun to kind of uh, see these faces again that you haven't seen in so long. Everybody looks so great. Um, so I um, went to USF and graduated and then got into the event life. Um, I'm currently the director of events for Armature Works in Tampa. Um, <laughs> I am married. I have two sweet little boys um, that are four and six, Connor and Liam, and um, they certainly keep me on my toes so <laughs> i bet i bet and that's really cool at armature works i think that uh one of the old school bayshore groups had a party there a few weeks ago from the 70s a guy by the name of jim brown bunch of graduates from that era so armature works is really happening right is that what's happening down there in tampa <laughs> yeah it is uh it's been a lot of fun i got involved with the developers early on and got to see it come from like dirt floors to what it is today so it was fun to kind of be a part of that process that's really cool um so we're now going to i know her as lindsay jordan i think the last name is Graydon. uh so yeah. lindsay tell us a lot about uh, what's been happening since graduation with you and your family and what's been happening yeah, I'm still in the Tampa area. We're south in Apollo Beach, and uh, I I went to University of Tampa after high school, graduated from there. Um, I actually started at Progressive, where I'm at still today. I'm a, I'm a senior recruiting manager at Progressive, and I've, so I've been there for a little over 20 years. Um, and I am married. He is a captain with the, the fire department here, and we have a daughter, Charlie, who is 11, so she's in sixth grade at Stefner Christian. Um, she oh. plays primarily soccer. She's a keeper, um, so she she's really wonderful at that. But Stefner Christian, she just started there this year, and they have volleyball, so you know I had to put her in that, and she's she's enjoying it. She's doing well. Yeah, you know, Stefner Christian is, is uh, run by a guy, uh, Roger Duncan, is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, D Duncan played at Temple Heights when I was in high school. Oh, so okay. That's sort of a rivalry. We'll let it pass since you're Bayshore royalty. We'll let that pass. But uh, yeah. thank you very much, Lindsay. Appreciate it. Um, there's no there's no introduction needed for the next lady, Erica Womack. More Bayshore royalty, famous Erica Womack. Erica, share with us what's been happening since 1998. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, I'm a freshman, so. Um, I graduated, I went to UT on a volleyball scholarship, another UT alum, um, and then I stopped playing sports altogether and I got into the entertainment field. So I've been singing, dancing, choreographing, traveling um, since about 2007. And that's why I'm currently, it's 2.30 in the morning here. I'm in Cyprus uh, <laughs> doing a quarantine before I have to go to Hong Kong and then another quarantine there and then I'll go to the ship. So. That's, yeah. that's pretty wild. I remember of course your mom singing uh, the national anthem and she was a teacher there and what a very talented, talented family. So absolutely, certainly uh, thankful to have you tonight sharing with us. And uh, up in the corner there, at least on my screen, is Natalie Gonzalez. Natalie, uh, I think Hello. you're at a girls' volleyball game right now. I am. I'm at my daughter's volleyball game. Excellent. So, uh, so we're wearing the mask and all that inside. It's so hot in here. But um, after graduation, I went to USF. I graduated in um, biomedical science and then went back and got my bachelor's in nursing. And I've been an ICU nurse for the last 12 years, and currently I'm living in San Diego, California. We really appreciate all the work. I mean, you nurses in the ICU units have really been through it this last 18 months, two years. So we certainly appreciate your dedication. Thank you. Thank you. And that just speaks to all the baseball graduates and, of course, this uh, volleyball team. And we'll get started with Kramer right away and go right into the season. Uh, Kramer, tell us, in 1997, did you think that season as it ended was going to lead into a state championship the following year in, in 98? Tell us about your thought process, off-season work. What were you thinking? Well, as the girls know, I'm, I'm pretty confident with most things. So I absolutely knew that we had a phenomenal team 
all the girls brought their individual talents. Um, so in 97, we, you know, definitely bonded and we're playing so well together. Um, but in 98, I, I did, I didn't know we were going to win state, but I knew we were going to go far. <laughs> Very good. You know, so, um, you know, obviously as, as the season progressed and we had, you know, phenomenal numbers and, you know, then we had, you know, such just compatibility, which is amazing with us, you know, passing and setting and hitting and it just, it flowed great. So yeah, I, I did think that we were, we were going to at least go say. Hey, I think we've just been joined. I didn't think that we were, we were by the state of Florida's greatest volleyball coach. I think we've just been doing. I don't know if you guys can hear. There's right. some feedback right. somewhere. Uh, maybe we can turn down the phone or somewhere. But Melanie, thank you for joining us. You're here with your original crew, the original gangsters, the 1998 state champions. Thank the you. For I've been listening because I couldn't get in and I'm like, oh my goodness, I haven't seen all these girls together in 20 years. <laughs> That's so great. That's so I great. absolutely love it. Thank you for joining. We're going to keep going through and then we'll come back to Melanie, uh, the coach of these South Tampa legends. And we'll go to Kristen next. Kristen, 97 into 1998. What were you thinking? Did the team have the, you know, Kramer mentioned it. I mean, she believed in it. Did you believe in it that this was a special team that could do great things in 1998? I knew we definitely had a lot of talent. Like Kramer said, I don't think, I mean, I can't speak for everyone. I didn't think that we would, you know, I didn't know if we could win at all. Um, we even, you know, joked around, I don't even know when in the season we joked around with Mel and we we're like, well, what would you do if we won state? And <laughs> she was like, She's like, I will take you guys to Disney World if you win state. And we're like, okay, that's great. You know, and even then we were just like, oh yeah, you know, that's funny. She'll take us to Disney. Um, but then did she, like- Did she take you to Disney? Did she take yes. you to Disney? Yes. Okay. That's good. Oh yeah, we, were, we remembered. <laughs> we remembered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think as it got closer, even, you know, we we're like, oh, this is awesome. And it was exciting. And we knew, you know, that we had the skill but I think, you know, each, we didn't take any of it for granted. And we knew that, you know, we just had to keep working hard. That's really great. And uh, thank you for that answer. We're going to turn now to Lindsay. Lindsay, um, playing for Melanie's dad, Coach Valdez, there's a mythology behind it where every day is 400 suicides. You're running uphill both ways. Uh, you know, the world is going to be blown up if you don't do this. Um, the man obviously is a great Christian man, loving, caring man. We love him to death, as you can tell from the Facebook page. But the mythology is it's World War III till you win. What was Coach Umanensky like uh, in your career there at Bayshore and specifically the 98 season? Um, exactly what we needed. I mean, I, I don't think like even even now we, you know, my daughter practices they have volleyball practice every day, even on Labor Day, we had practice. And I talked to her about, you know, us practicing on Thanksgiving and at Bayshore. And it's like, <laughs> do you want to win a state title or not? I mean, so the people who really want to win it, they're in there no matter what day of the week it is. They're not griping and they're and they're not just there going through the motions. They're I mean, I, I remember, you know, doing I don't know if it was suicides or jumps on the on the bleachers or something like that. And I remember um, Coach Valdez being there and I remember thinking like, oh, I gotta throw up, you know, and I probably didn't, I probably was just whining. And, um, and he, you know, I think I dismissed myself to the restroom and came back and he said, now don't you feel better, get back out there. You know, like, and, and Melanie, I don't think was too far, you know, from like very much like her dad, like she was tough on us, but, um, there were absolutely moments that she was so supportive and even like opening their home to us, um, you know, for having a meal or just having a place to relax between school and practice. You know, I mean, now as adults, we know like our home is our sanctuary and you invited all of these, you know, girls in there and I'm sure we didn't clean up well after ourselves. So <laughs> um, she was such a good balance of exactly what we needed both, you know, tough as nails on us, you know, and that got us to, to where we, we got. And, uh, but also, um, 
you know, so, so I would say warm and, you know, supportive. That's, that's really great. Yeah. And that, the great, the great coaches and great teachers know how to balance in how they teach uh, whatever class it is, which includes uh, the sport that they coach. Yeah. We'll turn now to Ashley Kemp and, and your thoughts as 97 heads into 98. Then we'll go to Erica and Natalie. We'll come back to your coach. 97 is going into 98. You hear there's a lot of expectations. Kramer believes there's no doubts. Um, what were your thoughts, Ashley, going into that season? I mean, I think we had a great crew. I mean, and that speaks to Mel too. She was able to really keep us all together and um, really pull us together. I mean, we had been through a couple seasons at that point. We had been to FSU camp. We had, um, you know, spent many a nights at Mel's house. Um, so I think it was really, not only were we talented on the court, but we all were such bonded off the court that we really just pulled it together that year. Um, and it was all the right stars aligned for us at that point. And we had worked hard and we, we deserved it. We, you know, we had all put in our time, not only with Mel, but when she was out on maternity leave and, and Coach Valdez came in and I, I definitely, Lindsay, remember feeling like I was going to die um, for that week <laughs> that he was there. Um, but, you know, it was, I don't remember it being Mel being, um, you know, the endless suicides, I'm sure were a part of it, but we were all having so much fun that that's not the memory that really sticks in my head. You know, it was more about the fun and playing that we had. That's, that's exactly right. That's a really good way to put it. And that does bring up a, an important story. I'll ask Erica and Natalie to comment on it as well. Erica, of course, South Tampa, iconic legend as you are, like all of you ladies are. Um, and you're shaking your head, but I tell people these, this, these podcasts started sort of as me and Chris Bate sitting around during COVID lockdowns with nothing to do. And uh, so we thought it up. Bayshore matters. I mean, Bayshore today still matters, but back then to us, when I got a job in downtown Tampa, people are asking me where you go to school, Bayshore Christian. Oh, I remember when you played Tampa Catholic. I remember when we played Jesuit. There's so many Bayshore graduates that have gone on to such important careers, which from, from homemaker to the Lockheed Martin directors of the F-35 program. So Bayshore matters. You guys mattered and made such an impact. Tell us about your thoughts, 97 going into 98. Also tell us about Melanie, uh, had to turn over the reins mid-season, was it, for a week or two, uh, maternity, and Coach Valdez, others have commented on it. What was your experience with uh, Herman and, and, and those moments? Well, for me, you know, the 98 season was my first time playing. So um, I was playing basketball, seventh and eighth grade, and then Mel approached me and he was like, come, come to the side. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And um, so I didn't really have any expectations. Um, I just was, I, I was very raw. I was very just like, I had really very little knowledge of the game. So I was just basing it pure off, just off of Mel telling me what to do. And I just did it. <laughs> and then watching these ladies do what they do best and just, you know, trying to keep up really. Um, it wasn't, I, I was probably the most naive, unexperienced, you know, inexperienced one of the group. So I was just kind of following the, you know, just like a swarm of fish, you know, I was just kind of like falling into place and, and they were, you know, such great examples for me. And Mel was very patient with me and everybody I felt was very patient with me. Um, and I had a great experience. I mean, I do know that suicides and all that stuff is definitely not fun and hard and all that but I think it was necessary for our our, our success you know we were able to um, keep up and our stamina was always you know high energy we always had you know just a great time like like Ashley said so um, you know I, I loved it I mean who, who can say your first year playing a sport ever you won the state championship I mean I, I couldn't ask for anything better <laughs> That's really great. Now, um, before I go to Natalie, one follow-up question. As the underclassmen, did you have to carry anybody's bags or get their donuts for breakfast or anything like that? No, no there wasn't any. No, I mean, not unless I forgot. Did you guys do that? I don't think <laughs> <laughs> Very good, very good. Yeah, that was amazing, so. 
Very good. Natalie, um, and then we'll go to Coach Mel and then to Kramer, back to Kramer. Uh, what was your memories from 97 going into 98? Oh Any expectations? Share with us what your thoughts were. Um, well, first of all, I did throw up from suicide on at least one occasion, if not more. Um, I just remember, like, I remember, I specifically remember one time when Coach Valdez, we had lost the first uh, set, won the second, and so we were going into a third set, and he was talking about a, a pendulum and a, and a clock and how the momentum goes from one team to the next, and you got to go back in there, and and oh man, we just I learned so much stuff from them, like applied on the court, but off the court in life as well. Um, just super great family, and I'm so blessed that I was able to be coached by both of them. Um, as far as expectations, I don't, I, I think it just we were always the underdog, nobody expected it from us. I remember we had like eight people on our team, and when we started advancing, like we pulled players up from. JV so that we would at least look like we had a bigger team walking into the gym because we literally there weren't a lot of substitutions it was us and that was it and it was just the whole experience was incredible and, and to win it my senior year that was it was magical I've never experienced anything like that in life yet that's a that's a great way to describe it uh magical um uh, to win that state title I'm sure that your teammates here would would share that opinion you know, we have Natalie coming from San Diego at her daughter's volleyball game. We got uh, Womack and Cypress. I mean, this is a global group here, uh, Coach Mel. I mean, global impact of all these ladies. You know, just jump in and just tell us what you think of uh, your former players uh, in that moment of the first ever uh, state title uh, in, back in 1998. Well, before I jump back to 97, 98, I'm just – enamored by looking at how beautiful and how wonderful everyone looks and I'm just so proud of everybody um it's hard to but I'm not that old I they um they have just aged beautifully and <laughs> I'm thinking how old was I when I was coaching them <laughs> and I actually I was 26 years old when we won the state title and I was like holy smokes I was a new mom um so in 97 I did have to step out for a couple of weeks and but truly that was it. It was just two weeks. I was right back in. And actually we were traveling down to, um, to Lake Worth to play in a regional, our first regional appearance. And I, no, I wasn't going to miss that. Are you kidding? I'm not after all of the hard work that they had put in, but, um, yes, it was a mighty eight. It was, um, eight young ladies at that point in time who were just enamored with the sport of volleyball and, we really didn't have, you know, you talk about that expectation. We just knew we wanted to win. And once you start winning, you just have that desire and that drive to do that. And the, the talent, whether it was new talent or experienced talent. Um, I remember when Ashley came to the school and it was, um, she was a missing link, you know, in that particular year. And then uh, once the other girls realized that together we could put all of the pieces and that each of them had their own unique talents and skills. I, I was reading some of the articles. It was so much fun to reminisce because to be honest, right in the day to day, I'm still coaching. I got home less than an hour ago and um, I'm going to make them all watch this video because they don't know what suicides are until you throw up because <laughs> they don't make girls like this anymore. They just, it's just not out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm serious. The parents won't let you um, be the coach that you want to be, right? And so every once in a while, they'll see a glimmer. And my son and daughter are both helping me. And they're like, remember when? That's what you need to do with these girls, mom. And I'm like, yes, but um, I will have to show them the, this video from this evening. But um, I was telling Steve that in 98, our season of 98, we went to Santa Fe to play a game in Lakeland. Um, having been to Lakeland Civic Center multiple times, um, oh, right. watch our boys <laughs> basketball um, experiences at the state, I knew where the Civic Center was. So I'm like, hey, girls, if we make it to the state finals. We'll be playing here. Little did I know that it was not going to be at the Civic Center. It was going to be at George Jenkins High School. If we end up playing here and we win, that's when I had teased that we're, we'll go to Disney World. It was Natalie's mom who after the game shouted, we're going to Disney World. <laughs> um, I, I honestly probably wouldn't have remembered, but I had to keep good on my promise. And we raised the money and I took them all to Disney World. 
Um, but, you know, that was just a fly by the seat of my pants comment. Um, we were just experiencing. Do you make those better. comments anymore to your new team? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I can't afford Disney more anymore. <laughs> um, no, but it was just kind of an opportunity. And then knowing that what we had done the year before, it was the first time we had one district, the first time we had advanced to regionals, they started um, a winning legacy that, that continues. Uh, it, the girls look at the picture up on the wall, which is still there if you haven't been in the gym, and they say, we want to be the fifth picture on the wall. And I ask them, what do you think it takes? And, you know, we, I try to give them analogies and relate to, to these ladies and just how much work and effort they put into it. But, um, but yeah, when we played that game and George Jenkins, like Natalie said, or I think it might have been Ashley, nobody was expecting much from us because we were the underdog. Nobody knew who Bayshore Christian was. And even though we had advanced a lot the year before, who were we? We're the small little Christian school in South Tampa from a city who has Tampa Prep Academy, Berkeley Prep. Those were the volleyball powerhouses. But um, I was looking at back of the articles. We started with those powerhouses that season in our preseason. We played Academy, we played Plant, we played Robinson. So we set ourselves up for success for that entire year. Um, and when that game was over, they just kind of collapsed in sheer excitement and just disbelief because we had pulled off the inevitable. And it was, it was an amazing, unbelievable victory. I mean, I, I still can remember it. Yeah, th there's nothing like the first champion uh, when you're talking about a dynasty like you guys created. And that's such an iconic picture of all of you collapsing on one another in joy, uh, as Melanie was describing it. It's such a great picture. Um, we're going to go now back to Kramer. Uh, first team all state, all county, all conference, um, superstar volleyball player. Uh, who was, in 1998, who was our biggest rival that you, who was the team that you wanted to beat? I'm going to ask each of you that question. What was, what game told you we're, this, this proves we're going to have a special year. Oh God, you're putting me on the spot. I, <laughs> I guess this week, I don't really remember. I mean, there was schools that we played and some were, you know, awful and we just like, killed them and then some were competitive but i mean i guess keswick was a pretty tough game we had you know during the season um, how did you let me let me interrupt and ask this question i'm looking at the schedule melanie had sent me and there's two letter l's by a school called canterbury I'm not sure if that's fort myers or st petersburg was that a good program and did were they in the same classification did you have to play them in the playoffs do you remember any of that I know that they were tough. I don't remember if we had to play them in the playoffs. I, I had a baby 13 months ago. I don't remember anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have my like baby brain. I'm sorry. I remember yesterday. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just remember some schools. I don't know. We just, I just, we had a fight in us that I just don't remember like going at a school like intimidated or scared or saying, Hey, we're probably going to lose this game. Like I, I, we, I just felt like we could just do whatever. I mean, and we may have lost, but it wasn't ever planned. Like we, we came in that gym and we, the, the confidence and the attitudes that we had, um, we just, I just felt like we could win anything. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a great feeling um, and for kids, especially to be in sports or some kind of activity at school, just to kind of learn, um, you know, how to be a grown up. I mean, teamwork and, and how to be an underdog and, and move up in a, a company or a team, you know, how to be aggressive. I mean, those are just such great skills that you can learn as a, as a, as a high schooler or, or college to take into your real life. Cause it's exactly the same thing. You have to fight for positions and, and jobs and it, it really uh, taught me how to be successful in my job with being aggressive and and going after what I want you know and, and being a team player so the, those kind of skills you, you you're not just born with them I mean you're you're taught them through to, through you know teams like that you know in, in schools like Bayshore Christian so it, it's a really it's really really important and I'm a big advocate on children doing you know whether it's 
drama or, you know, arts or sports, just to have some kind of hobby to learn those skills. It's, it's, it's a really great thing. That, that, that's really great. And, and it's reinforcing, I think, what many of you have already said or implied. You know, when, when I played for Coach Valdez, he once told us, you know, if, if all you remember 25 years from now is how to do a baseline uh, <laughs> layup drill, then I've failed. Uh, it's all about the life uh, lessons that you learn. And, and so you're totally right. That's really cool to hear. And I have this. I brought, I got, I got this out of storage. Oh, nice. Oh, very good. Very good. The champions with their hardware. Very good. Um, Kristen, Steve, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, please, please. Just something that Ashley said, um, and maybe they trained me as much as I trained them. Because when you talk about walking into a gym and watching the opponent, I've always focused on my team. And if our girls could just do the best that they can do and we, we can finesse and figure out how to be the best that we can be on our side of the net. So I don't know if it's just because men are a whole lot more focused on details of who you played and who <laughs> the players were and what the score was. But I just remember if we could just do what we needed to do, we would be good. And I still coach that way. And so when people talk about scouting reports and things along those lines, I'm like, it's not going to change the players on the court. We just have to do the best that we can do with the skills that we have. And so she mentioned, she said that. And so I, I wanted to just chime in. That's a very good, very good point as well. Um, I, I don't want to escape that question though with Kristen because she has a brother that played uh, sports at Bayshore. Mm -hmm. Her father coached, her bloodlines run deep in the school so there had to be somebody sitting in study hall that you really wanted to beat more than another, right? Uh, I mean, like Kramer said, Keswick really stands out. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I guess they were Seminole back then. They're Cambridge now. Right, um, right. Yeah, they, they were usually, you know, a, a pretty good rival for us. Um, did, did they ever surpass... Like, so y'all beat them. I mean, you won the state title, obviously, but mm -hmm. did, did at any point in your career, did Seminole or what is now Cambridge surpass us in, in volleyball? Like win district or, or was better than us? No, I don't think so. Okay, good, no. good. <laughs> no. That's, all <laughs> That's all I cared about. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, like Kramer said, I don't like, I don't ever remember going in like, oh man, like they're good. They're going to beat us. It was just like, like we're good. Um, and, you know, we had all the pieces so that even if one person had a bad night, like it, it was okay because, you know, there were five other people on the court that were still going to have a great night. Um, yeah. Like sometimes you have a team and, you know, they rely on one or two people to win the game. Um, and I don't feel like we were like that. You know, we had enough people on the court that you know, somebody could have a bad night and we, and we would still win. Yeah. That that's very evident in all of, in, in each of you, how you've shared tonight that it was a truly a team. Uh, uh, all of the constituent parts work together to get that trophy. We're going to turn to Lindsay, Ashley, Womack and to, uh, Natalie. Um, and I'm going to change the question a little bit. Um, you're sitting in class, Lindsay, um, is volleyball treated with the respect you wanted for all of y'all's success uh, while, during that 1998 school year? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I you know, I think all of us felt very proud even before the season wrapped just to be part of that team. Because, um, I mean, I in high school I was not. <laughs> as some, I was not oozing with self-confidence in high school. I'm still working on that. So it's a work in progress, but still I felt confident, you know, in my teammates and like who we were. And, you know, when we got casual dress days and wore like our, I don't know if we wore our jerseys or a team shirt with jeans, like, you know, you felt very proud to be part of that team and um, part of this group of girls. And um, so so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think, and I think that that's, you know, beyond volleyball too. Um, you know, I think, you know, the athletic program at Bayshore 
you know, has always been respected. I mean, I've played softball. I know these ladies played other sports too. Um, so I, I would say for sure, uh, yeah, we, we got the love, help the love. Absolutely. That's great to hear. Uh, Ashley, my question for you is, um, what was your favorite game day experience? Was it was a pregame meal, uh, bus, a van ride, bus ride with your teammates, uh, pregame preparation? When did you lock in? Was it the night before? Was it in class? Tell us about your best game. What, what was game day experience like for you? Yeah, for sure. And actually, one of the pictures you posted um, mm -hmm. recently just kind of brought that all back. Um, I think it was a, a picture of us at Mel's house. I mean, we, a lot of times we'd get out of school at three or three 30 and our game wasn't till, you know, six 30. Cause there was a JV game before ours. And, you know, there was a family meal that we would all have together and we would all be braiding each other's hair to make sure that we all had the perfect same, you know, outfit for the game and um, that everybody had their bows correct and their socks were at the right height and you know it was just like it was girls being girls but at the same time it was us really bonding off the court that just transpired to that bond that we had you know during the games which was was special for sure that's so cool Womack um best game day experience for you uh tell us a little bit about it what was it an opponent was it in class you had a certain teacher that was like talking to you about the game tell us what that was like and your experience at Bayshore on game day back in 98? Um, if I'm being honest, I, I don't think I really <laughs> thought about it because like I said, it was so new to me that I was just enjoying um, being a part of it. Um, of course, I really did like going to Mel's house um, <laughs> and getting fed. I mean, who doesn't like to eat, right? Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I enjoyed that. And because um, I just felt like I was, I was just like along for the ride, you know, I was part of something great and, um, but I didn't really think too much about it. And I think that that is what helped me being the, the newbie was I didn't take it really too seriously. I understood that we were doing really well and that we were a really strong team, but I, it wasn't like super deep for me at that point, just because I was young and, and it was fresh for me. So that was kind of how I felt in 1998. Right, right, very good. I mean, you, you did so many things. I mean, the basketball team, like you said, didn't y'all go to a Final Four or do really well in basketball around that time frame? We got to, I think, was it your senior year, Kristen? We went to regional finals. Yeah, maybe? yeah, went, so when Antoinette Cole, Colby yeah. now, we went to the, we went to Final Four. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is with, with um, them but then yeah but we went yeah we made it to regionals I think the regional finals we, we didn't yeah. make and 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 to be fair I was still more basketball like basketball focused in 98 so that was also that for me too so um, my focus was definitely not probably maybe as intense as maybe some of the other girls, but that was just because, again, I was just, I was, it was all new for me. <laughs> right, right. Well, you became, I mean, you're a legendary figure. I mean, there's a great picture of you the next year. I think it's the 99-2000 season. I think the volleyball team maybe made the semifinal, the final four that following year. So you're the, you know, the, the previous uh, champion and we got knocked out and there's a very picture of you sat on the sideline. I remember that picture when I was going through all of the pictures Melanie sent me as being a great photo. So such a great career. I'm gonna to turn to Natalie, uh, game day experience, Natalie. Um, your favorite, a teacher that was talking to you about, hey, y'all are gonna to win tonight, hanging out with your teammates at Mel's house. What was game day like in 1998 for you? Game day, definitely going to Mel's. I think that's the big difference between um, like a lot of the, the teams nowadays and what we did was she didn't let us, like we focused with each other 
and there was no time to get in trouble from getting out of school till game time. Um, she just really kept us all together and it was so much fun. Like some of my greatest memories are over there doing hair and I, we drove her nuts. I'm sure. I don't know how, I don't know how she withstood it, but um, you know, she was always very much about, even when like we would be in a game and like the other team would call a timeout and you would be like on a serving street, she'd just like, you stay over there and, and focus on what you're going to do to serve and don't come over to the timeout. Um, she just had, uh, she's, a, she's iconic. I don't know how, I don't know. It's a gift that she has. Um, as far as teachers, I mean, they're still so small. Everybody, everybody's involved in all of this, you know, in the, the, the team spirit for, for everything and so it was just good times complete good times yeah that's really great to hear and you just said it uh, uh melanie is iconic she is a hall of fame coach what's really interesting is that winning the state title at 26 years 26 years old melanie you're generationally much closer to your players than coaches usually are nowadays or at least you yes. know during that time so um what was that like and then we'll start back up with kramer with our final series of questions what was that like coaching a team at such a – well, I have, I have two questions for you. One is, what did you do in the offseason building 90, the 97 team into 98 uh, structurally, not just the usual going to camp, but did you study film of opponents or anything, anything like that? But also um, the second question is, of course, how did you feel about coaching uh, young players who are sort of in the same you know, age range? So when I graduated from high school from Bayshore, uh, I said, I am finished with volleyball. I had played club for six years. I thought about playing in college and I was like, no, I'm finished. Uh, but three years later, I was back in the gym at Lindsay's mom was actually the head coach at that time. And I started assisting and jumping in and we were on the bus and the van rides together. And I said, I'm not finished. And there was never, but there were, I don't believe there was ever an age um, conversation and there was never any disrespect or concern of age whatsoever. Not that I remember anyway, they might remember right. something different. Um, no, was it, a, was, oh, it I benefit? was it a benefit to be close in age? Did it help you relate to your players better than perhaps an older coach would have? That's, yes, that's absolutely. <laughs> That's very possible. So, you know, I grew up with a father who coached my entire life. That's what I knew. That's what I knew how to do. And that's, I just put into practice everything that I had seen and grown up with. And um, I had already started my career. I was already teaching. I had already graduated from USF. Um, so yeah, it was never a question as far as, I just knew that what it took, I knew that I would play with them. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, but I used to jump in there. We used to scrimmage together. Um, so yes, I think, you know, you get better after you graduate from high school and college. And then you look back and you're like, well, why didn't I do it this way? And you become your own critic and coach. You realize um, so much more. And so I guess that looking back, I was able to share some of my insight of what I wished coaches had done for me and shared with me. I was able to do it for, for the girls, but no, I don't think it was ever, they were always respectful. Silly. Yes. Crazy. Yes. My home was only a thousand square feet at the time. Um, and so when they would all come in, so if you ever stop by, I live in the same place, but we've added on another thousand square feet. So you, there's certainly more room. You're more than welcome to come and visit, but yeah, it, it was a great family time, a great camaraderie, and we never second guessed anything that we did. It was just move forward, work hard. What what structurally did you do as a coach in the off season? Ninety seven obviously was a high level performing team. Right. And you have players coming back. What was what did you do in the off season to prepare for ninety eight? Well, we started going to, and I think somebody mentioned, we went to a Florida State camp. Um, and I often would go away from the city of Tampa and coaches would question, why don't you just go to camps in Tampa? Cause those are all the teams and the same players that we would see all the time. We wanted to go. I want to take the girls to see new competition, new faces, new skills. So that was a great opportunity. Um, I think we did open gyms often. We were in the gym as much as we possibly could. Um, I was not trained in 
videos and recording and scouting or anything along those lines. I, I do now. If, if there's some amazing apps called Huddle. It, you know, where was that 26 years ago? Um, but no, it was just a matter of, yes, I've read lots of books on skills and drills and Google wasn't as big as it is now, right, to go find things. But as much as I could, we were in the gym um, playing at club. I got a lot of my experience. I also coached club while I was coaching them. Um, so that was a great experience. So I just gathered as much as I possibly could and tried to give it back to them. Um, Ashley was playing, uh, Kramer was playing club. So she would bring back information. I would go and watch her and, and gather things as well. That's really good. And, and we're here with the 1998 state champions, the first of the dynastic decade under Melanie Umanensky, four state titles in 10 years, multiple district titles, multiple college signees. Uh, the, I mean, other than Tampa prep, I mean, who's better in the city of Tampa? It's the greatest program in Tampa volleyball, as far as I'm concerned. Um, going back up to Kramer, and we're going to go to our final series of questions. I could keep you ladies all night, but I mean, when you have superstars in Cyprus, you've got volleyball champions in San Diego, you've got brand new babies in the house. I mean, there's a lot of things to be doing, so we appreciate all of your time. Um, this final series of questions Ashley, I'd like you to give out um, any shout outs to a former teacher or students that you knew, but tell us about the state championship game itself. W when there was, when it was get match point, I think it's called, or game point or whatever, when did you know and, and what was your feelings? I know we've mentioned a little bit of it already, but give us a final wrap up to what 1998 meant to you. And I think you're, I think you're muted on our end. Let's see, let's get you. Sorry. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that final game, I kind of still can remember certain plays. I, I think we were down that, that last part of the end of the game, we were down. Um, I think Erica had, had gotten some uh, hits and we started to catch back up. Um, and I think one of the last plays was, I, I got this like amazing, like I didn't even see it happen. Like I got this, like this dig that like, I didn't even know I got it like crazy. I think uh, Kemp set it up and I think Erica just tipped it over. Like we didn't, it wasn't like a, a crazy hit. It was just like a simple tip and like, that was it. And like, I'm, I'm the bottom of that pile. <laughs> like, I have, I'm the famous butt pitcher like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it was just amazing like I still can remember it. it's like one of my like top five things that ever happened to me like it, it, it really is just such a great experience um, you know it's one of those things where you know you just wish you could just relive that kind of feeling because you, you know you can't can't buy it you know it's just it's all the hard work it's all the you know, like the late nights and the coming home late and doing homework late and, and keeping your grades up and, and I played club. And so I it just tons and tons of practice. And, you know, it's just, it's so nice to, to be able to do all that and then see the reward, you know. Where did, where did you grow up in uh, South Tampa or what part of Tampa did you, did you live in? I actually, I actually lived in Carrollwood and drove oh all the way to South Tampa, yeah. Um, but the one thing that I can remember, because I played club a lot, and I played obviously for other teams and college, is um, not only the fans, if we're being a small school, like our fans, like we had like, they made posters and like the cheerleaders didn't have to, but they came out. Um, and the other thing is, is our parents, like, no, no other team I've ever been on has the support that like our parents had. Like my dad works a lot and he never missed one game, never missed a game. Um, there's a picture of him in one of those pictures that he, I think it was when we won the district, he ran out before we could even like cheer. Like he's like running and he picks me up. <laughs> and it's like, he's in the picture. It's like Melanie's not even on the court yet. He just like leaps from the stands. And I remember, you know, uh, Kristen's dad was always there helping out and Kemp's dad and you know it's it just you know and it, Lindsay's parents it's just it's so nice to have that support because they see how much we love the sport mm -hmm. and to be able to like you know take time off work and and 
you know, bring us food and, and do all that stuff. And they, they were just so supportive of like what we were trying to accomplish. So I'm sure they were just as proud to see all of us accomplish it, you know, as, as much as we were. That, that's so great. That's, a, that's yeah. really awesome. It was just as much their win as it was ours. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that. I know everybody's going to love to see that and hear that when they watch this. I'm going to turn to Kristen now. And Kristen, the same question. Any shout outs you have to former classmates or teachers? Of course, your coach and teammates, of course. Um, but your, your final thoughts as the clock is ticking down, or not the clock, but the final points are being scored. Um, and, and Kramer just described it. We were behind a little bit and we had to make some plays to make it happen. What were your thoughts as that title is finally in y'all's grasp? Um, yeah, it was kind of like a, hey, like this, this is actually, you know, like happening. Um, and then, yeah, I think, yeah, Kramer was in the back serving like she was in like the one spot. And then we scored that last point. And like, I just remember like looking around and she fell to the floor and then like we all just took off running and just like piled on top of her I'm sure we we're all like falling our eyes out and you know um but yeah it was just like all the hard work all the yeah the suicides the like you know um the drills that we just did over and over till like we couldn't feel our legs anymore um it was just all worth it like you know we we went out on a win so it just made it all worth it that's so awesome. Lindsay, we're going to turn to you. Uh, you know, Tampa prep. I, I don't like anything about Tampa prep. Sorry if y'all's children go to Tampa prep. <laughs> I still live like I'm 16 years old. So they're, they're our rivals. <laughs> um, so they, they're great. They're great at volleyball, though. They were always known as being great at girls volleyball. You guys set a new standard in South Tampa with the first of many state titles for the Bayshore Umaninsky dynasty. What were your feelings as those final points are being scored and we're able to finally uh, grab that trophy and bring it home to Bayshore Christian? Oh, I don't even, you know, I don't think I, when we were talking earlier about if we, when did you have a thought you would win? I don't even know if that crossed my mind, honestly, until it happened because I don't know, I was kind of aloof back then, but uh I mean, I, I do, I, I, I thought I remembered that it was Kramer's serve that you served last and, and then that final point, I couldn't remember how, but I remember, I think we like lost one game in the middle and like obviously won the last one. Um, so I remember there was a period where, you know, um, there was like, oh gosh, are we, can we do this? And then when we won as, as these ladies have, you know, said, I mean, it was just kind of a, a pile on top of Kramer and that yeah. picture, uh, the, what did you call it? The butt picture that's uh, in my dad. That's in my dad's living room. And to this day, like when we meet people in public, it's so embarrassing. Like he makes sure to tell them that his daughter is a 98 state champ. And I'm like, geez, dad, um, <laughs> you know, the, the parents were my great. I mean, my wedding toast mentioned it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I purposely, I, I, uh, I, I gave my brother and my mom a heads up about this thing tonight if they wanted to watch, but I did not. I'll, I'll tell dad about it later. He can watch it later. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was not, no, no feeling like it. And, you know, I um, went to an, another school my next year and graduated from Bloomingdale and I didn't play volleyball there. Um, and I, tell my daughter now, like, I always regretted that because like, you're just never going to get that opportunity as an adult in most cases to play on a team where you, you know, you're all so passionate about the same thing and you're willing to put in the work and it's, there's just nothing like it. And so that's why these days, you know, we, we pick her up from volleyball and drive her to soccer and, and I'm sure one day we will miss the hectic, um, but that's, I, I want her to experience you know, what, what I got to. That, that is just great. I mean, it, it, you, you hit it right on the head because we're all parents. Uh, I think we're all parents, but the ones that, ones that are parents, it's very relational uh, being a part of a team and being part of a group that builds towards something uh, together. Mm -hmm. It's an act of selflessness. It teaches so much. And, and when you get older and you look back at life, there's so many important points and you care more about your, your children. You, you think about your, your wedding and all the different points in time that are that are memorable 
but you certainly have a special memory when you are a part of something like a a team and especially a championship team. So all the things y'all are sharing mm -hmm. are exactly true. Uh, Ashley, uh, turning to you, uh, so I'm learning here because I didn't realize it. We lost the middle game. Uh, so are you concerned as to whether or not we're going to be a champion or whether or not we're going to be a runner up? And uh, so share us your thoughts about that and give any last shout outs to any classmates or teachers that you remember. You know, I don't think that was the first time we lost the middle game that season. Um, I think, uh, you know, Mel always did a great job of pulling us back in You know, when, when we got down. And I think we all did a great job of picking each other up. I think somebody else said, you know, one of us could have a bad game and, and the rest of us would pick up the slack and make sure that we still pulled off the W in the end. So I think that, um, you know, winning or losing the middle game is, is a challenge, but I think it just made the win even better at the end. Um, so I, I think winning that last game was even better with that loss in the middle. So, um, and I just wanted to say, so coming from someone that went to Bayshore from kindergarten on, you know, I was brought up through the, um, the Bayshore boys legacy of all of their wins and, um, you know, uh, always hearing about the greats. And there were certainly so many greats on the guys and coach Valdez and, um, and Steve, you were a big part of that as well. And, um, um, you know, it just, it, I think it felt good to, to come off this win as a, a girl volleyball player in a school that had been dominated by the boys basketball team for so long. And, and rightfully so they had their great victories and they, um, they all worked hard, but it was definitely a good feeling in the end. I think seeing that photo, um, I remember seeing that photo go up in the gym and just kind of being super proud of that moment. Um, and that what we had accomplished that had not yet been done at, at Bayshore so that's really all that's exactly right how how tremendous and and I can share that joy with you uh, what an accomplishment because it's a Bayshore accomplishment and to see the ladies get that first title and get it on the wall uh is just amazing so that's really great memories to share with us and thank you um now turning to Erica Womack Erica uh Bayshore royalty yourself I mean your whole family uh, so talented so accomplished we thank you for joining us from around the world at this time of evening, morning, uh, where you're at. Um, share with us your few, your, your last thoughts about um, that. And, and like you said, as, a, as an underclassman, being a part of that great moment. Um, and if there's any shout outs you, you want to give to any fellow teammate, uh, classmates or teachers, those final moments there in 1998, share that with us. Well, it's interesting, like to hear everybody's recap and um, you posted the article with our scores because I couldn't remember you know I, I did know we went three games but I couldn't remember like how close they were you know I, I just I just couldn't remember um and then I saw them and I realized like we basically blew them out the first game and then the second game we probably got complacent because we beat them so bad the first game, you know? And then that third game, like Kramer was saying, it was like point to point to point to point. And then now I remember us getting to that point where it was like, it was 14, um, five, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I remember, remember saying like, oh my gosh, like we could win. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, yeah, I mean, it's happened before. And <laughs> when it happened, you know, just like you said, you have that moment of like, did we just, we just did it. Mm -hmm. And then emotion fills you and then Kramer fell to the ground and we just all jumped on top of her, you know, at that point. it's just like, um, and it was such a great experience because our families, like they've said, they were all there. Um, I wish I was home because I found some pictures, uh, my brother, uh, Jaysha, my mom, my dad, they had, uh, my brother had painted his face. Um, oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, and they had, you know, and, and they're, you know, they're Bayshore alumni too, and they had, you know, 98 state champs, and they were there, everybody was there with their signs, and, and to be, uh, you know, playing away, um, but to feel like you're home is, you know, it, there's no better feeling. And for me personally, the experience of 1998 and playing volleyball being in my first year, that 
winning with these girls, like that made me fall in love with the sport. And then that's when it was like, okay, basketball, I don't, I don't know. You know, I mean, of course I, I still played and, and it, it was always volleyball just basically came to the same level as basketball for me at that point. And I wanted to put as much work as I could into volleyball as much as I did basketball. And, um, you know, I know she's here and we've already kind of said it, but my shout out is to Mel because, you know, if it wasn't for her approaching me and saying like, you could play, I, pro I might not have ever played and I might have never gotten a scholarship and done the accomplishments that I did in college and, you know, just so thank you. <laughs> that, that's really nice that's really nice wow. uh, another fellow spartan there so uh, uh that's really great and we're going to get to mel here in a second uh, natalie we're going to turn to you or we're almost wrapped up did your daughter win her game she's working on her phone there <laughs> let's see if we can get her real quick no they didn't win the, the oh. game oh sorry did she play but that's okay that's the, they've only lost two games this season so far. Um, so uh, they, I have hope for their the rest of their season. Right. So tell us uh, final thoughts, any shout outs to former teachers, coaches, uh, teammates, classmates, but your final thoughts as the, 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 not the, the final points are counting down 14 to five. We're getting ready to score the final point and, and uh, Kramer's at the bottom of the pile. Tell us about how that felt in those final moments. I, I think, again, it goes back to um, what Coach Valdez and Mel taught us, like all those suicides, you, you win games when you're tired. That's, that's when the real winners come out. And we won the first, we lost the second, we're tired. And that's when you got to dig deep and, and pull through. And it was in, the, in that moment at that game where, you know, like all of, all of the suicides were worth it and, and all of the training that we did. And, um, you know, they just worked so hard with us. Um, also coach buddy, he was Hoover. buddy, right. buddy who, yeah, he was right. like a huge part of our team too. I mean, it's so good that these people gave their time for us and, and we just probably gave them gray hair, but, um, you know, those are people who really poured into our lives and uh and and made a difference um so just want to shout out to them that's awesome i, I forgot and buddy scott hoover. and scott, scott. <laughs> yeah so, yeah scott humaninsky yeah the hoovers i know that the hoovers were in bayshore ministry for a long time because i remember buddy hoover from the 80s so uh that's really great make sure to give him a shout out we're going to close with mel um you have some final thoughts uh to share about your former players here i mean Melanie, I mean, we're talking about uh, the, the, the softball team had a state championship runner-up in 82. Your father's boys teams have had sustained excellence in the school. Oh, yeah. 40 years has done well at basketball. Right. Final fours, college players. But nothing has approached the dynasty that started with this group of ladies. Four titles in a decade, multiple district championships, Tell us about what these ladies uh, meant to you, uh, the volleyball program at Bayshore and Bayshore as a whole as we wrap up. Well, I probably remember, I, I am still a crier. I um, absolutely would get so overwhelmed with just happiness and emotion that I, even during timeouts, sometimes it would be hard to express either anger or wanting to, to fix something or just happiness and when things are going well. Um, but I think I, one of the things I recall, and Kristen and I were talking about this earlier today, was after the game, after just being so completely shell-shocked and with excitement, I mean, it was just such an amazing victory. Um, we all went out to eat together, and the ball went with us, and they kept their medals on. Some even slept with their medals on. They came back to school the next day with their medals on. I didn't get to enjoy uh, the after effect as much as they did because they were all together at school um, as, as one unit. And I wasn't there with them. I was back at work. Um, but, you know, every time I pass George Jenkins High School now, there is no affiliation to um, Lakeland other than going and winning a state title at George Jenkins High School and, and or for previous teams at the Civic Center. Uh, Civic Center. 
but that first it's the first it's the first of any sport it's the first at Bayshore Christian School you know it we can never um look back and think lowly on that it was just absolutely amazing and I, I didn't you know, you're talking about something that's so overwhelming and you talk about this group starting what has been a legacy since. I didn't think about it like that at that point in time. I was just so exasperated that this group of young ladies had just accomplished the unaccomplishable. <laughs> that a word? Um, but anyway, just a matter of, wow, we did something absolutely amazing. And now the school, you know, now that I'm at the school and still coaching, it's just absolutely amazing to have that foundation with all sports. You know, Kim said, yes, it was always about the boys basketball program or for, it was for me anyway, that's how I grew up. Right. Um, but the girls had, they made, they made their mark and I know they didn't just make it, they took it to the top and it's still there. Um, and so I'm just very proud of them and all of the accomplishments that, that they made that season and for laying the foundation for future teams and teams still, they look at the pictures. They want me to talk about each and every player. What did that, what position was that player? Was she any good? That one looks feisty. That one looks like they had an attitude. They want all of the details about the different players. Um, and so it's just, it's a phenomenal feeling to be, have been a part of that with this group of ladies. That's really well said. And uh, ladies, uh, we can't thank you enough for being here this evening. You're such accomplished professionals and such uh, great representatives of your families and of your legacy that you had at Bayshore Christian. Uh, so great to see all of you and to give us your time this evening. So we have these podcasts for nostalgia, for memory, and to make sure the history is properly recorded of the most dominant volleyball dynasty in South Tampa, Tampa, uh, Florida, and that's Bayshore Christian. And it started with you guys. Thank you for very much for being with us here tonight and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Everybody stay safe out there with COVID and thank you again. Good night, ladies. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Steve. Bye, girls. You guys thank look great. You, ladies. Bye. Come and visit the school anytime. I would love to see all of you. Yes.